So what does this mean in terms of international security? Well, first of all, it means that we're starting to have a pacing problem in that our capacity to manipulate biological systems might be um, outpacing our ability to respond to those problems. And so we're causing risks in being able to essentially have this, the, um, the biological science become out of our control. And in this type of situation, we see that there's a strong dependence on the rate of being able to both develop our detection and our analysis and response capacities in addition to our ability, ability to manipulate biological systems. And in this case, we're responding to a few different classes of threats. We're responding to natural threats, as well as engineered threats and emergent threats. Right? We already have diseases, biological diseases, that have existed for a very long time. Um, we also have precedents of, uh, of biology being, de being weaponized. But we also have accidents that may just come from us trying to work with these dangerous biological agents and then accidentally releasing them. This means that many of our security challenges are also coupled to safety challenges, just in terms of how we work with these systems over time. Here we show a picture of one such agent with this anthrax. So anthrax naturally occurs all the time. But many of you may think about it in terms of the anthrax attacks that corresponded with 9-11 in terms of um, specific um, uh, uh, biological agents being shipped in the mail. Um, but there was also recently incidents where those that are looking to develop new ways to deal with anthrax, if there was an attack, um, accidentally um, released it within an uncontrolled lab. And these are all related challenges that we'll have to deal with in terms of understanding how biology can disrupt um, order and, our, and cause harm um, to people and to the environment. One of the other challenges is just in the inherently dual use nature of the technology. In that in getting better at biology, we both get better at good applications. So for instance, being able to develop, say, a vaccine to an existing disease but also bad applications, meaning we can equip people to actually use that, uh, that technology to develop um, for nefarious uses. Um, and much more just mundane applications as well. And so the question is, how do we discriminate the technologies that may be the same that equip both good and bad use? And in particular, if we're looking at that as a governance challenge, how do we control the development and proliferation of technology so we can mitigate its nefarious use? So how do we ensure that the technology is used for overwhelmingly good purposes instead of overwhelmingly bad purposes? And there's different ways to think about control mechanisms. You can think about control over the materials. You can think about control over the people. And then you can also think about control over the information. And it isn't yet certain which one of these strategies is going to be effective especially in combination for dealing with biological threats. 